director sat down and said, here's the spiritual story I want to tell about sisterhood, about elevating yourself to your best self. That's what hooked me. That's what made me cool. such a, a big journey of a show because it shares life from how old are you when you start like six, like yeah yeah like first grade to to mid 50s where we like leave off to try to tell that whole story um, and to have three women be the center of that and really use each other it's just a really great way to come into work and be like I get to share this story with these gals and there are times because Life does imitate art, and we're putting on a big beast of a show, and there are times where we're exhausted, or we're sad, or like life, something weird in life happened, and you're like, oh my god, I have to really put that behind and not have it come out on stage, and we get to look at each other in the eyes, and honestly be a support system, and yeah, there's a moment in the show when we sing Song for the Lonely, which is the act one sort of closer, we the three of us come together and look each other in the eyes and there are so many moments where we are literally singing to each other. I am singing to Stephanie, Michaela, I need Michaela's voice to sing to me and I'm like, oh my god, this girls. Ah. It's, it's really wonderful, it's such a gift and I'm so thankful that we get to do this. And yes, okay. <laughs> what it was that, you know, the through line of these three men who were in love with this one woman, this other man who was a huge partner in a different way in her life. Do you guys ever powwow about that? As like a group of the guys who... We, I, I, we haven't powwowed about it, but I think just, uh, for me personally, um, Sunny is such an integral part of this story, and then when my character comes into the frame, um, there's such a juxtaposition, there's such a drastic um, difference. So I, I, I like, there's a lot of things that I um, have chosen to do that I, I, that I specifically want to be stark different from things that Sunny is doing those days, that Jared has chosen to do, because uh, it was a point in her life where um, she needed something completely different. It was something completely different. It was somebody who was a little bit younger, someone who was um, not restrictive, uh, someone who was very, very go with the flow, who was very, um, he was like a, uh, in the beginning, like a like a human, like lovable blanket that just wanted to just smother and love her. Um, and not that Sunny did neither, but you know, they had gone through some difficult things. So, answer your question. No, we haven't powwowed, but I have been taking a lot of cues um, dramatically off of uh, what precedes me. Michael, you were telling me on opening night a little bit about what it's like to play Rob in terms of you know you talking about Matthew, you talking about the contrast of it how you feel like you're in contrast to almost the whole mechanism of the show, that things just shift once that relationship enters. Yeah, it's, I think what the Share Show got so right, especially from Chicago to New York, is they just found its style. And I, I'm, I'm listening so intently here, and I'm, I'm having epiphanies right now, but it's so true, and it's, it, it, it's relatable to when you meet Share. Like when you meet Share, like Stephanie was talking about, you're almost like backing off because she is such a huge thing, and you just get sucked in more and more and more, get stripped away, and she's still the same person. And, um, yeah, I, 
I feel like now you just spend a night with Cher. Even the, the Camelotti stuff is so different now. Uh, we we met in a club in Chicago, and then we uh, I helped her with Moonstruck, the script, and uh, then we went to the Oscars together, and she won her Oscar. Um, and now it's more stylized, where we start out in the music video for I Found Someone, and we it's the same essence of it. It's just different. Uh, text, right? And, and like you're saying, like you don't need all that text to endow all of that stuff. And uh, Cher came into my dressing room to talk to me about Rob, just me and her. I was sweating, she looked beautiful. <laughs> and uh, I was like, do you want to sit down? And she was like, no. And I was like, I'll sit down. And so I sat down. And she stood there. And um, like Stephanie's saying, there's just so, it just gets deeper and deeper. There's so many directors who are just like, go deeper, go deeper. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I get it now because it just, it means so much more. And I think that's what we're finding now. So, um, yeah, my, my personal relationship, it was a challenge for me, uh, especially, I'm, I'm 28. And, um, <laughs> and I am actually a huge fangirl of Stephanie J. Block. So... <laughs> I found out I got the job and I was like, who's shit? Oh, you're kidding, Snappy J Block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I freaked out a little bit. So my challenge was, um, the, the notes that I kept getting from Cher and the directors is Rob so grounded, he was the adult in the relationship, right? And, and I feel like a little fangirl of Snappy J Block, so my work was, was really finding my power and my strength, and, and Rob actually helped me, Michael, find so much groundedness and, and my confidence that I'm the youngest of six, so I'm usually just like grasping for people, but uh, this this job has has really helped. She raised her hand. We are gonna. But I have to say, by by the end of this beautiful marathon, and he and I finally get to share the stage, and it is you and I for a good chunk. He is physically holding me up. He is silently with his eyes holding me up. There is. You are a great um, center for me, and there are times where I am very tired, and this one is taking the brunt and leading me along, and I will screw up lines left and right, and he's with. You know I make stuff up. You know I do. <laughs> Sorry, Rick Ellis, but by the end, I'm just like, hamana, 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 hamana. And he's with me, and it is really a flow that changes, but you are the adult by the end of that play, so thank you. You guys got that on camera? <laughs> we actually had a question from Twitter, from um, Allie on Twitter, who wanted to know about keeping yourself intact through such a strenuous show. How do you preserve the voice? How do you preserve yourself emotionally? Especially, you know, doing someone else's voice. I'll take this one. I'm in 23 minutes of the show, so it's really... Grace Girls, one, two, three. Fuck you! Love you. I think I'm still trying to figure it out. I'll be really, really honest. Um, I've been blessed that I know what big shows feel like and big roles feel like. This feels different in the sense that it is really an emotional go because we do start at six, we end really present day. You say 54, but really we end where she's in her 60s and we've lived through a lot. And that last chunk is very emotional. And I do find myself breaking down every show. It doesn't have to be fabricated because the exhaustion is real. The backstage life is very physical as well. If you saw the choreography, I know we keep going back to that, but it, it unlike a lot of shows where you can sit in one costume and wait for your next entrance and then put on some like, you know, comfortable haracha shoes. This is not what this is. As soon as I'm off stage or any of us are off stage, we're running to the next costume change. I, I laugh, but at one change, I've got eight people, and they're saying, wig check, dress check, shoes check, arm check, Oscar check, go. And it, it is a thing. It's a real thing. So I'm still trying to find that balance. I'll be real honest. I, I sleep as much as I can. Um, there is no, hey, guys, let's party. Not for this girl, anyway. I mean, I would love to with this company. They're exquisite people. I wish I could hang with them, but... You know, as a wife, a mama, and wanting to do the best I can on stage 
as long as I can. It is a true balance, and it sounds silly, but this one is very athletic in the sense that, you know, my wig weighs four pounds. I wear wings that are 25 pounds. At, at any given moment, we're, we're hiking around with an extra 40, 50 pounds on our back. So, um, she tired. <laughs> We didn't even talk about the choreography, both backstage and on stage from, on stage from Chris Vitelli. I mean, Michaela, you're kicking your face. This ensemble is living. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I want to end on this note. I think one of the biggest lessons I learned from the Cher show was about a woman coming into her power. And was seeing how much she fought, you know, we think of Sunny and Cher, and, you know, not just the early years when she was fighting, but that she was so successful alongside him, and I learned that that was not, um, I hate to say it, but it was not shared. <laughs> it wasn't. It was, um, her name was on it, but she was not earning what she had rightfully been entitled to. And that line about, I've been fighting all my life, just, I mean, hit, hit me to my core. So we'll leave on the note of what is it like to play the woman coming into her power, to be around this story of a woman coming into her power, and then how has that empowered you? I feel that saying coming into her power is very interesting. I feel that she's hit her power many times and somehow the world, as it has a way of doing, wants to strip anyone who has found their power of their power. She has never allowed that to happen. The outside eyes can say, wow, she's not at her most successful. That doesn't mean she's lost her power. I feel her power always comes from, I'm coming back and I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my fans something happens, she comes right back. I'm doing this for myself, I'm doing, and it's a beautiful, beautiful, complex story because she is the most resilient. She never gives up, and one of the final lines of the show is, you win some, you learn some. And that woman is still open to, to learn. And as silly as it sounds, she puts her voice out there for social issues, artistic issues, human rights. And every now and then she may trip on a word and she's the first to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it in that way. And that to me is what makes her so powerful, is that we get to see the flaws and the stumbles and the being stripped of your power, and yet this woman is not going to stop because she decides when she gets to stop. I don't know if there's anything you guys that would want to have at it. Before you guys go, there's a share themed photo booth with two cast members, Mikey and Blaine, a floor above us. So go partake, and uh, there's probably wigs, right? There has to be wigs. There are ways to find it. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Um, you can look at some of the fun we were having backstage um, on the Insta Stories. I'm at Ruthie Fierceberg on Instagram. Follow them on Twitter and Instagram at The Share Show. And be sure to go see The Share Show at the Neil Simon Theater on Broadway.